essence of due impartiality to continue. I'd like to thank the noble Lord, Lord McNally, for this important discussion, and already it's raised very uh, meaty topics. Yesterday, in the debate on Baroness Stahl's opposition to foreign state ownership of the media, even those antagonistic to the politics of The Telegraph and The Spectator spoke passionately in support of media plurality. But while newspapers cover a wide range of political stances, in broadcasting there's a lot less viewpoint diversity, I'd say, and we must ensure that any regulation does not narrow choice further. I'm especially thinking of attitudes to three-year-old GB News. Love it or loathe it, the channel is surely a valuable shake-up of the media landscape. Yet it has attracted a disproportionate hostility from influential voices. It is, however, popular with growing audiences, 60% of whom are based in the north. 3.5 million viewers watch the TV monthly, a further 3.5 million access its social media each month, 20 million its website. This month alone, GB News has more views than Sky News 48% of the time and more than BBC News 29% of the time. So why are some so determined to scupper a popular channel? Even before its launch, a Liberal NGO Stop Funding Hate lobbied advertisers to boycott the channel using corporate cash as a tool for censorship. More recently, big name media players all over X constantly urged their followers to complain about GBN to Ofcom, seemingly keen to regulate the channel out of existence. A year ago, uh, GBN comprised 1.3% of total broadcast complaints to Ofcom. Now it's 11.3%, and I'd say that's less merited by content than politicised malice. One complaint is the use of MPs as presenters. I'm personally not sure how I feel about this, but some perspective is required. The channel has 30 main presenters who host their own shows. Only two at GB News are serving MPs, appearing collectively five hours a week out of a total of 126 weeks. And what's more, as the noble Lord Vasey has explained, GBN didn't invent the model. LBC has been doing it for years. And beyond David Lammy, there's been in the past LBC's Call Clegg, Ask Boris, even <coughs> Phone Farage. I'm not a cheerleader for GB News, but a critical friend. Programmes like Andrew Dawes Free Speech Nation and Michael Portillo's Culture Show are the very best of, its, of uh, UK public service broadcasting, but some shows are less to my taste. I'm also a critical friend of all of the broadcasters, like the BBC. I've just been on Politics Live, but I have a love-hate relationship with much of the Beeb's political output. We shouldn't hold back from criticising channels when it's, when it's deserved, but that's not the same as trying to destroy them. And I want a, re a level regulatory playing field. Otherwise, double standards might distort the focus of regulation. In January, Jewish staff working for the BBC lodged formal complaints about anti-Semitism internally and including coverage of the conflict. We've had uh, BBC newsreaders ludicrously avoiding calling Hamas a terrorist organisation. And as the noble Lord Lord Pickles noted in the chamber on Tuesday, there are serious concerns about anti-Israel bias in the World Service Arabic division. Never mind that one-man challenge to impartiality, Gary Lineker, who retweeted a bigoted demand that FIFA should ban the whole Israeli football team uh, from international tournaments. No consequences. In contrast... Former BBC senior broadcast journalist Kath Walters wrote in The Critic magazine recently about the way BBC managers demanded she delete a tweet criticising the term cis women within an hour of it being posted, followed by a lengthy disciplinary process in which her gender-critical views were treated as wrong think. Ms Walter's article was prompted by recent instances where the BBC's lack of impartiality in relation to sex and gender has led to seriously misleading audiences. Recently, BBC viewers were informed that men can breastfeed. Spoiler, they can't. With a non-binary identifying expert alleging, unchallenged, that the hormone-induced discharge from a trans woman's nipples is better for babies than a mother's breast milk. What misogynistic claptrap. When the BBC... Where's BBC Verify and Ofcom when you need them? Sometimes, in the name of impartiality, facts are described as opinions due to institutionalised ideological partisanship. The BBC recently upheld a complaint against Radio 4's Justin Webb that ruled he broke impartiality rules when explaining a story with the factually accurate true remark, trans women, in other words, male. Finally, there's the sins of omission. 
Why has the BBC been absent and silent in covering the scandal of the safeguarding risks associated with puberty blockers for the young? Now the NHS England has banned these uh, for teens, the BBC commissioned its LGBTQ plus correspondent to tell the story, not the science reporters, to discuss the medical scandals. I'm glad to say GB News has been following this, covering this and leading on this for years. Oh my Lord. 